Hello Internet and welcome to another video. A while ago I saw a video, a uh, stand-up maths video about three-sided dice or coins. Here's one. Uh, not exactly what you were expecting, was it? Or maybe it was. Well, it has three sides, top, edge, and bottom, and you can throw it like a die and it will presumably, if you throw it enough times, land an equal number of times on each side, or at least it'll converge as the throws goes to infinity. The dilemma is that how do we know what relative dimensions to use in order to produce a fair die? In the original video some strategies were explored, and it was mentioned how you could take the area of the sides of the cylinder projected onto a fitted sphere, which leads to a diameter that is 2 root 2 times the thickness of the disc. They also looked at it from a circle perspective, taking the rectangular cross section of the disc and doing essentially the same technique but in 2D. This leads to a diameter that is root 3 times the thickness of the disc. They did some tests and some statistical analysis and found that those two uh, ratios they came up with were incorrect, uh, but provided upper and lower bounds on the correct ratio. So how would we actually solve this problem? Well, the approach they took was crowdsourcing it, which I think is pretty cool, um, because as it was mentioned, it allows for a lot of repetitions to be performed and a lot of data to be obtained. There's an inherent issue with this though, because uh, the exact shape, material size, friction of the pieces can affect the outcome, uh, the way they're thrown, the motion of the air molecules around them. Alright, the last one maybe not so much, but you get the idea. There are lots of variables. And as I was watching the video, I was thinking, man, if only the experiment could be repeated thousands of times in the exact same way, keeping all the factors except the ratio of the diameter to thickness constant. Hey, wait a second. I know how to program. I've got a game engine with a built-in physics system. Why not just simulate it? And that's exactly what I did. Thousands of dice, all with the exact same mass, material, and dimension, each given a random starting linear and angular velocity. Of course, uh, this doesn't account for the extra factors present in the real world, but that's the point. I wanted to see if a simulation like this might give any insight into the solution. I started by varying the ratio between the two bounding values. There was definitely an intersection where the probability of landing on each side was the same, which is expected, obviously, but it showed that the range could be narrowed down a lot more. Then, I used a range of 0.4 to 0.45 with the increments of 0.0025 and 18,000 dice per throw. The dice that weren't perfectly on one of the sides uh, after a certain amount of time were not included. At this small uh, intersection range, the data can be pretty clearly interpreted as linear, so if you take the slopes and find the intersection point, we end up with about 0.414, which if we convert it back to the uh, original notation of uh, being between uh, 2 root 2 and root 3, uh, it ends up being about 2.415, so 1 over 2.415. So, what does this mean? Well, aside from the fact that if you want to have a, for all intents and purposes, fair three-sided die, cylindrical die, in a sterile simulated environment, you need a diameter to thickness ratio of about 2.415. Aside from that, I looked a bit, but I couldn't come up with any sort of circle disc sphere related value combinations, which resulted in a number close enough to be coincidental. Uh, but to be fair, I didn't look very hard. <laughs> so if any of you can uh, put on your math or geometry hats and come up with something, by all means knock yourselves out. Uh, you know, well, there you have it. A uh, fun little simulated experiment. I look forward to seeing if the uh, real world results are similar or if they differ and uh, if they do then in what way. Anyways, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.